gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Completely unsanctioned and uncensored by any athletic commission whatsoever. Our hosts sitting tableside are Big D, David Falcone. Crash Dummy Corleone. And the Ultimate Fighter Season 31 winner, Kurt the Herd Hollyball. This championship podcast is brought to you by Hatchet Industries. And now, it's time for the Contenders and the Pretenders. All right, here we go. Welcome back to the Contenders and the Pretenders. So, guys, it's fight week for me. It's finally here. Put in the work. But before we talk about that, let's... We already bring them aboard last, last podcast, but... As you see, our new sponsor to the show, Creole Tomato, good friend of mine, been uh, supporting me for a long time now. My guy, Frank Creole Tomato, probably some of the best food I've ever eaten in my life. Is and Frank's last name Creole Tomato? No. <laughs> Man, I see it. <laughs> y'all, y'all been friends for a long time. It's 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 a long last name. It's fine. He probably thought your name was Holabo and not Holaba. Well, it's both. No, it can't be both. It can be both. It's <laughs> Okay, so tell me how it can't be both, because I have family members that pronounce it one way, and then I've always pronounced it another way. Well, we'd have to... Tra- have to so that's what I don't understand about We'd it. have to do your 23andMe, or Ancestry DNA, track your hair down, and see what it was pronounced to in the ancient term. Uh, maybe, maybe. Text. It has to be all about it. Might be Hulabo. No, for sure. I, I've heard it pronounced something similar like that before. No <laughs> So uh, the man of many names. That's why. That's why it doesn't matter. I've been called all different things my whole life. So, but like I said, of course, thank you to our sponsor Creole Tomato. Also, don't forget our riding sponsor Hatchet Industries. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Also, don't forget speedy recovery to Josh. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, I think he's doing good. What did I mean? I knew he. Yeah. What did y'all do to him? No, he he got uh, healed. Yeah, healed and uh, knee popped. Oh, or, okay. I don't think it's super bad. I think yeah. it's just a little injury. So. Just, that's why I said speedy good. recovery. That would make yeah. sense to that. I didn't say rest in peace, Josh. I said speedy recovery. Very different. <laughs> speedy recovery. Well, <laughs> if, it's, if you're not hurt that bad, you don't need a speedy recovery because you're like, hopefully you're already recovered. I'm hoping. Anytime it's you're, like, it's me. Anytime your knee pops in a heel hook position, it's always yeah, risky. My, my knees pop quite a few times, and I don't think I'm. Well, that's because you're about to say it. my knee pops when I'm going to the refrigerator. And I still get up and I go train the next day. I didn't oh, say you're not a badass. I'm just saying you're 40. That's why your knee pops. Oh, well, maybe. But my knees pop when I was 20. You are 40. That's like 95. That's probably because you're not 40. So that's probably because you're skateboarding days. Is why your knee was popping back then. I've had my knee pop quite a few times skateboarding. Yeah. <laughs> Back Kurt. when you were defending the skate park from all the bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> How's that comic book going, Blake? The current yeah, Hollywood defender. I gotta, I gotta get him to sign some paperwork first. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, Kurt, how are we feeling on this lovely fight eve? Well, fight you, week. You look extra skinny. Oh, I am skinny. I don't know man. if that's in, insulting, but you know. no, it's not insulting. Um, that's my hard work, dude. Because I was pretty heavy when we got this fight. As you guys know, I was like 185, almost 190 pounds. Yeah, you were so middleweight. I was over middleweight. <laughs> but uh, no, man, uh, I lost a lot of weight, but I feel good. I trained tonight and been training hard ever since. So, uh, you know, it, it comes a point in time whenever you're training for a fight, especially when I get a fight as far out as I did because I got it on like a 10 week notice. And it's like, after training for so long, you're just ready to do it. Like, you're tired of training. You're tired of getting up every morning, doing whatever you have to do, every evening, doing whatever you have to do, training-wise. And it's like, okay, I'm ready to do it. So talking about the 10-week thing there, I know most of your other fights, especially in the UFC, were always like six-ish, five, yeah. somewhere in that range. So do you, now that you're obviously putting this camp, this camp's coming to an end, time to do, you know, show all the work you put in the cage – you prefer the 10 week or would you rather a, it's like a six week, a sweet spot for you? So we could, we could go either way on it. I, the six weeks kind of like a sweet spot because I don't have time to mess around. Right? I don't have time to say, okay, well I'm fighting in, in 10 weeks. So I can, I can mess around, mess around I can a little bit longer. Beer. I, I can put it off a little bit, you know, and when you get to fight on the 10 week mark, 
you know, you get to training and, and or on the six week mark, I'm sorry, when you get to fight on the six week mark and by the time you start training, you know, when that fight week's here, you're ready. I mean, you're ready to go, but you're not burnt out so bad. Yeah, mm. that's a big thing I can see what 10 weeks is. Granted, you could say this is what you're doing is a profession. You do two a days for 10 weeks. Anyone's yeah. you're going to get to a point where you're almost burning out or burning. Yeah, no I mean, matter what. And of course, it's going to happen, you know, and I think that's kind of where I'm, I'm starting to get right now. But I, I mean, I, of course, if, if my fight was in three weeks, I would still be doing the same thing. I wouldn't slack off. You know, my fight is this coming weekend and I had a monster training session tonight. Yeah. So, you know, I, you know, I don't like to hit the brakes. I don't like to really coast. You know, we're going to fly out here this week to Vegas for, you know, the fight on the weekend. And, you know, I'll get down there. I'll do some light stuff. I'll do some pads and stuff. But that this is the week to cool down now. I'm yeah. going to put all the work in. Now I'm good. Yeah. Um, so we'll go down And like there. you said, your weight's already on a cuttable standpoint. Yeah, now. yeah, for You're sure. You're what, 159? Um, so I touched 159 okay. after a hard training session. But, uh, of course, it's not like I stay out of weight that I touch. You know, I'll go back and I'll drink a gallon of water. So a gallon of water is eight pounds. Yeah. So I'll quickly right after a training session put on those put that eight pounds back on because i just pound a gallon of water go get my my dinner for the night by the time i wake up i'm back you know 10 to 13 pounds over yeah but like i said that's weight that's coming primarily from water and sodium oh, yeah. which means it's going to come off easy in the sauna no it does i mean a lot of you can't get it confused and say okay just because i drink you know a gallon of water now i'm gonna miss weight that yeah. water will come out of you as soon as you start Depleting yourself. Yeah, and then you get your IV drip right after. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to skip that this time. <laughs> also, speaking of saunas, man, I heard you got a new presence into your house. I did, man. And I got to get it all put together. And I got to get to my manager, um, Chris, to see who I need to thank for that. But, man, it's a badass sauna. It's, I, saw, I saw you show me the picture of it. Can I show you a picture of it? Give me the picture. Yeah. Well, you should probably thank your manager since you don't know who, who else it came from. Well, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure we got. They got to deal with. I know. Somebody. I'm just talking it's, shit. It's sending all the, the the athletes, you know, um, these saunas. So, uh, but no, it's pretty legit. Think about it being like a legit sauna, right? But it's a tent instead of being wood. Yeah, but you actually got the stones in there. You yeah, said that should be like the high box, the stone, the water bucket. You put the water on the stones. So basically, you could pop this tent up any everywhere mm -hmm. or anywhere. Put your um, I don't know what it's called, but go with with the, the hot yeah. box where the stones go in and you put the water on. The stack goes through the top. It's like a chimney type yeah. thing. And man, let it heat up. Yeah. I'm okay. curious to try it out. I probably won't get a chance. Not before, before I leave. Yeah. But uh, I'm curious to try it out. Yeah, me too. Just let me, here, bring it to my house. I'll put it together for you. Let's yeah, put it together. And I'll bring it back to and, you and, sooner or later. But the thing about it is, no, I ain't gonna lie, it's, it's huge. It would not fit in this room. We barely fit in this room, Kurt. Well, yeah, I know. But I'm Facts. Like, what if you think about it? You should have got skinnier friends to do this podcast, man. Hey, I can't help that, man. Hey, let's you, stop y'all from losing a little bit of LBs. Just, hey, man. Hey, get on the diet. I just got on. You'll lose at least 30. Yeah, 30, and then you put it... I don't, you don't have the to second your more. fight's over with, you're going to be back to one. <laughs> we went to Waffle House, and you ate everyone's food. Not even never, just your own. I will say that. Kurt, honestly, to be a in-shape fella, I will give you credit for putting in the work because you trump me in appetite and eating ability. I like to eat. Especially <laughs> right after. There's Especially when no one wants to go to Waffle House. Yeah, no one her. wanted anybody that was leaving food. Because I think we had already eaten. We, like, eat, we ate before we went to the casino. But and then, Waffle House is like the only thing open at night. That but no one was hungry. But it, it, it had only been like <laughs> two or three hours since we had eaten. Kurt, <laughs> there's like an old South Park episode that where they're like getting snowstormed in. Mm -hmm. It's like 30 minutes and they start drawing straws to who they're going to eat first. Yeah. And then like after they eat the one person, it's like 10 minutes later, kind of hungry again. I'm like, <laughs> With, yeah, I think I just, did I just fall though, right? I don't try to, that was Jeffrey's yeah, bachelor yeah, party yeah, slash your bachelor party. Of course I'm freaking starving. And that was a hard weight cut because I was fighting at 45. You did fight that Friday before. Yeah, no, it, no, it was, yeah, it was after a fight. It wasn't for the bachelor party, even though he probably ate a bunch of shit. I thought we did that. I thought we went, didn't, uh, we, didn't yeah, they meet yeah. us in Biloxi oh, did before he, the bachelor did, party? Yeah. We, we, we Remember, drove. We, we drove, we went to the fight and then drove to Biloxi. Yep. Uh, we, all I think stayed, we all stayed that night in Mobile. Y'all stayed in Mobile. Me and Blake came to Biloxi. The day after After your fight, we drove back. We drove to Biloxi. Y'all met us there. 
went to the Hard Rock and all that for uh Yeah, I knew he had just fought. But yeah, but I was fight, thinking that was two different like, times. No, we just combined Kurt's fight with Jeffrey's bachelor party. Well, I remember during Jeffrey's bachelor party, Kurt was going everywhere trying to make it his bachelor party. He did. I had so, one fight to go to. That you <laughs> in the middle of your best friend's bachelor party. Nah. And he didn't want to be there either. Giving out free beer. Remember? They they did technically give it. They did. We did get free a free beer or two. Or I was about to say it wasn't the way it was promoted to us. Whatever it was, I don't really remember how it went. <laughs> I think it was like we were VIPs or something, and then uh, we barely got in. Did we still have to pay to get in? Or something? I don't remember that. But wasn't that Chris Fam? Yeah, yeah. Fam's fight. I can't remember that. I think like. <laughs> yeah, good times, good times. Always good to eat after a fight, man. No. So, of course, every you know, every fighter always says best camp of my life, this and that. But if you really had to rate it, because I mean, I've seen you in this one, and I would even say, even with your age of 40, 45 years old, your camp here has been very good. You haven't lost your power's been there, even with the cutting of weight, which I know firsthand, unfortunately. How old's your opponent? Uh, 34, 35. Yeah, so about 20 years younger than you. First off, I'm not 40. <laughs> not 41, not 42, not 43. I still got like three years before I turn 40. Give me a break. Let, let me enjoy my 30s, bro. But yes, I, it, it's crazy to say because, you know, everybody has to say, but it's like, what makes you say this is the best training camp? Like every time you do a training camp, you always think, man, how, like I couldn't have trained any harder. I couldn't have done anything any different, which is crazy to say, but. I don't know, man. I feel like I've topped it. I feel like I've put in so much work. The last time I feel like I've worked this hard was back when I was fighting Jay-Z Cavalcanti. I felt like, you know, it's just a time to where I just stayed in the gym, trained every day I possibly could. But this one's much different because I went around, like I went and trained to Kill Cliff. I went out to Port City quite a few times. Yeah. And I made my rounds. I trained here with my guys. Two a days, three a days, nonstop. Yeah. So you say the Jay Z fight, which the fight I'm thinking of. If I had to go back through your fight camps over the years, it's, I'm trying to remember the Jay Z one as much. I remember the opponent getting mashed. I remember the fight and all that, but I remember the Desmond Green fight, yeah. the first title fight for that yeah. one. And I mean, you didn't have Kill Cliff in your back pocket, you know. Then, but that's you went to. That's when you found Jimmy, pretty much. That was and the time. Link up with Jimmy. And you put a lot of work into Port City, two a days, this and that. That was one of the most dialed in camps I've ever seen you. So the thing about that camp, when I fought Desmond Green, I want to say this was back in 2014. It was my first ever five. Well, not really. My, I had a fight scheduled for five rounds. Just didn't, didn't go this five was, rounds. This was a fight scheduled for five rounds live on NBC, uh, CBS Sports. Right. So we go down like a week early. Me and Raphael do, and that's when I meet Jimmy because Raphael says, hey, I got a guy that I used to train with. I'm so cool with Jimmy. We're going to go by his gym and uh, go a week early and get some training. And so that's when I first met Jimmy. We kind of hit it off, you know, become a big part of my team. And I feel like I, uh, I had a lot of success in that fight because of him there too. So and ultimately, I got the win over Desmond Green, become a champion. And uh, me and Jimmy's been working together ever since. But even, man, I was still young. I, I think the difference between now and then is- what, I, How old were you then, 35? No, I was probably, uh, I was 28, 29. So, still in my 20s. <laughs> so. Barely. Um, but the thing about that, I was young. I don't, I, didn't, I don't know if I really knew how to work that hard. You can say you're working hard. And of course I was working hard, I wasn't shortcutting but now that i'm been in this game for a long time i've done a hell of a lot of training camps this one's by far the hardest i've ever worked and you can go back and say well man you're the ultimate fighter like that know. one's you're fighting so many times close together it's almost a matter of keeping your weight down in my opinion well, you're still putting in the work and training but you're fighting two times within well, two weeks two times, 10 days 10 yeah two mm -hmm. weeks so 10 11 days that's more like making that. sure after you win that first fight you don't put any kind of poundage too heavy back on to make way for your next fight. Right. Well, and I don't even think that was the, the big thing for me because I, I didn't. Um, I think I got up to about 170s something, which still is not a bad cut. But um, the thing about the Ultimate Fighter, that was easy. The, the training at the Ultimate Fighter is easy because you have no 
other no life. You have no distractions. No distractions. No other life outside of training, right? Because that's what you're, you're there to train every day, come home, eat. That's it. So there's no distractions on the outside. That makes it easy whenever you're being shuttled. When, you know, hey, Kurt, get up, man. The bus is coming in 10 minutes. So I get up, man, throw my, get my gear, throw my clothes, training clothes on, drink a cup of coffee, see if anybody's got anything, cook for breakfast or not. I got my own stuff that I ordered. I can pop in a microwave or whatever I want to do for breakfast. You know, like grab it, go out the door, in the van, you're shuttled to the best facility possible with the best coach as possible, right? That That's going to run you through the training for a day. And then you shower and you go home, eat your lunch, get ready for a training session number two. To me, that's easy. It's hard whenever I'm flying to and from Deerfield, Florida to train at Kill Cliff, where I'm driving two and a half hours to Port City to train with Jimmy, when I'm driving up to Hattiesburg to train at another gym, Graham with Johnny Smith, you know, and then I'm driving an hour to Hammond, you know, to get there a week to, to do my jiu-jitsu. And do and yeah, just the traveling is tired. Yeah, tiring. and plus the being there for every one of your fuck. You still have not missed a fighter, one of your fighters' no, I, events yeah, flew back. for everything. That, you got your fighters and then you got your kids fighting. And then I teach my classes throughout yeah. the day. Man, by the time I teach two or three classes, I'm worn out. I'm like ready to go home, but I'm like, nope, I still got to train. And not only do we train, I do jujitsu class, and then we turn right back around and do MMA class. Yeah. So I'll roll, f- what what we've been doing, about four to five rounds, but it might be a seven-minute round, might be a six-minute round, and I'll put some hard jujitsu rounds in, and then I go straight into hitting pads with D, or t- t- I'm thrown right into a circuit, you know, for MMA, and then we're drilling whatever we're drilling, and, and I do another class. Man, that's, that's rough. Yeah. I mean, it's funny you say the Ultimate Fighter was an easier training session because I know, I think even you've watched some, a good bit of the previous seasons of Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. When they used to focus more on the drama than the actual yep. competition, how many fighters have left that show from missing girlfriends or missing, you know what I'm saying? I remember a like, lot. yeah, like just situations like that. And it's, they would not call it easy, but everything is contained. Your training shuttle, like you said. Well, that's what I'm saying. That- Everything's there for you. Like, you have a sauna at the house. You got multiple saunas. You got a hot tub. I mean, you got whatever you want. Every day you get a list. You just write down on your list any kind of food you want, anything you want. Really, hey, I mean, I sleep good with a fan. And I can you give me a box fan? No. Next day, you got a box fan. So they do everything for you. No. Like, you have to push yourself, of course. And that's going to be hard, but... It's easy at the same time. Yeah. Doing what I did for this training camp, it's not easy. Yeah. So I know the second time you went back, you made two trips to Kill Cliff. Yep. The second time that Chandler actually was there. Yep. So you got to actually talk and get some work in with him. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Did you get an interview for the podcast? No, I didn't get an interview with the podcast. No, oh, you got some good good videos you put up on YouTube for no, us? No, I didn't get no good videos. Okay. So I, I don't want to, I, I didn't video nothing because... First off, I don't think you're allowed to video. Anything. What about the ones you were sharing that the other people were videoing? I didn't share your videos. Okay. What did you say? What video did I share? You're in it. So. Oh, well, yeah. They, they, oh, yeah. They, they, they can video. You just can't. That's their photographer. Yeah. You can't oh, okay. go around video, but they got their own photographer and camera mm-hmm. guy. Okay. I think his name's Alex. But, uh, yeah, he, he'll do some videos and put some stuff together for the gym and stuff, but that's it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think... I mean, I'm pretty sure it's you're not supposed to have your phone out. I, I, yeah, you know. How was the Chandler catch up though? You haven't seen him. I mean, you have texted here and there, but you haven't seen him since Boston. Yeah, since Boston, since the last fight. So it was good, man. So, uh, you know, I got there early and uh, he walks through the door and, and Coach Dry looked at me. He's like, hey, I turn around and there's Chandler. So I get up and I walk over there and say, oh, shit, man, what's up, dude? And, uh, you know, and the next thing you know, here come Roe come walking in. So I'm like, yeah, man, it's, it's cool. It's a tough one. A little tough for you, you know, yeah. so it was cool. Did you get to see um, uh, Bader at all while you were there? Was he back no, training yet? I don't think Bader doesn't train at Gilcliff. Okay, I didn't know if he didn't work no, there think, or not. No, I, don't I, know think so. I know Chandler brought him on for yeah. y'all's teams. I didn't I know. Think if, they're managed by the same manager, so okay. they kind of probably go on a lot of trips together with the managers and stuff. That's probably how they. We should close. trip together. Mushrooms, a little acid. I would imagine business trips for a spot. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be all serious business. Because Bader definitely fought a Predator Jr. in that situation. He was a monster. Yeah, he was bigger than Ngannou. 
for sure. And now we go to fight Nagano, and I think uh, yeah, fight Nagano. I, I thought Nagano was a woman. I don't know if you see Nagano fight MMA again. Why is that? He just made twenty million dollars with Joshua that. That's and true. fifteen million before that with Tyson Fury. Are you sure he's not a woman? I thought that was a woman this whole time. <laughs> Francis is a woman name. Not in no, not France. Not. <laughs> French consider that masculine. <laughs> this, this whole time I thought it was a woman. He didn't beat up Ronda Rousey? No, no, no. Okay. That was uh, okay. I don't know what the hell you're talking that about. That was Charles you Brown. Your, your, your Listen, bro. Listen, you don't even know who's sponsoring this podcast. If people are watching, they're going to think we're sponsored by Zenith Jiu Jitsu and Black Rifle Coffee Company. First off, this is one of my tough coaches. And I don't, Black Rifle, that, that's a UFC sponsor. How much money did they give y'all? And I, well, I don't have a girl to make. You paid for that shirt, shut up. No, you can't. No, if you order two coffees, you got a free shirt. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> that's what I got this the contender and the pretenders. Where's my podcast? Oh, it's, it'll probably be here next okay. uh, February. Where'd your shorts at, man? You're a fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been at work all day. <laughs> I'm wearing my work clothes under this. Where do you work at again? Don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, so feeling good. All right, let's I'm, take. I'm Blake from State Farm. That's why I'm wearing khakis. All right, I need to take the humble, nice Kurt. Take this part right and put a little box over here. I don't want trash talking necessarily, but I do want to know with your opponent Trey Ogden, where is your clear cut advantage, and where. It, and what, I guess, advantage would you say you have, he has over you, if you had to pick one? Um, or, or pick. So, I think my advantage I'm just listening. <laughs> I I think my is going to be my pressure, my pace, my speed, and my boxing. I think that's going to be my advantage. I think I'm going to be faster than him. I'm going to hit harder than him. And I'm going to move better than him. Okay. I, I really don't know about jiu-jitsu. I'm a grappler through and through, but, man, I can box, right? Uh, I have just as many knockouts on my record as I have submissions. I think we're almost even, like, 10 and 10 or 10 and 11. I don't know. You have to look up sure dog. But even you got to count the ultimate fighter wins. You got to count my no contest that I won by knockout. That's a freaking knockout, right? So I think I have the advantage, a big advantage in the striking department. Um, if he has an advantage... It might be wrestling, but bro, I'm going to tell you this. I have up my wrestling game big time. I feel like if I put him down, he doesn't get up, to be honest with you. So we'll, we'll, we'll see, man. Uh, but all in all, a fight's a fight. Like I tell everybody, dude, I can, I, this is the, probably one of the best and hardest training camps I've ever worked, right? But you got guys that are spending $1,000 on nutrition. You know, $1,000 on training camp, $1,000 on different coaches, um, $1,000 on a, a bunch of different equipment, right? These guys go out there and get knocked down in the first round because it's a fight and anything can happen. I just know when it comes time for the fight and the door shuts and the bell rings, I got to be better than him for 15 minutes at the most. That's it. So are you better than him? For we'll find out. <laughs> Is who's gonna make the mistake, man? Who who's gonna who's gonna get clipped with something they don't see coming? Who's gonna make a, a a bad mistake? Which in this game, at this level, you can't make mistakes or you'll pay for them. So if fight nights, Joe Rogan's not there. No, nope. no Rogan's not there. Okay, okay, so you can't. Be, so you can't tell him. Or I think you get Bizbang. Just Bizbang. Even he has a podcast, right? You're gonna ask him to be on his podcast? Probably not. But man, look. Let me, Go out here and let me get a ranking, and then I would everybody be trying to come to the podcast. If, 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 right if you start to lose, bite his ear off. No. I mean, way to get what, cut. Well, what you can do, you can do that, wait 20 years, and then get to box Jake Paul. That's what I'm saying. Bro. Exactly. You're following a career right here. This is a that's the line to a great career. Uh, yeah. I'm sure I'll talk with you before Saturday, of course, but mm -hmm. more than this be the last time we see each other. When I know. text Kurt, he well, just yeah. says, Who is this? You won't be here Monday. You'll leave flying out Monday. Yep. I'll be out. <laughs> you see him? He said, who is this? <laughs> in a group chat with only three of us. Yeah. But, yeah. but all in all, like I said, I can vouch on this one. The work was put in. I 
perfect scenario. Like you said earlier, when you were training for Desmond Green, you were doing what you were being told, but you didn't really know what you had, you know, in that sense. Now you do. Now, of course, I could only imagine where your career would be had this been your camp ability from Jump Street, but you're here now. Yeah. You put in the work, but you put in the time. You know, I, I'm a true believer that everything happens for a reason. If if those, if everything that happened in my career before now never happened, maybe I don't take the path that I that I'm set up with right now. Maybe I don't go to the Ultimate Fighter. Maybe I don't become the Ultimate Fighter, which I think is a huge accomplishment. Yeah. You know, I'm in the record books forever. I have a title by my name now as the Ultimate Fighter 31 champion. You can go look on Tapology or Sure Dog. There's a championship belt on that fight. You know, um, when you go and, and you look up titles, the UFC has me as a title, tough 31 winner. So that's big, man. So I, I feel like I'm not mad at anything that ever happened before now, but now's my time to, you know, I, like it's crazy. I am 37 years old, but I feel like I'm truly in my prime right now. No. Well, like I said, I think a big, a big factor with that is because you're not someone who goes, does a fight, take off for two months, yep. then you get back into camp but just when you get a fight announcement. Maybe you're not going as hard as you are these past 10 no, weeks. No, of course not. But you're still actively training and working every day, every day from running yep. two gyms. So. And, you know, this was something I did an interview the other day, and I told somebody something like this because they were asking me, you know, you know, how's it feel being, how do you feel at 37? And I'm like, man, you know, I was the kid that was 21 years old and still looked like I was 15. So I feel like my body doesn't age like fast. So, you know, I was doing alarm installations when I was like 18 years old and I would knock on the door and this, the people would open the door and they'd be like, what is this 10 year old doing here to install my alarm? <laughs> I'm like, hey, I'm, Kurt, I'm here to install your alarm. They're like, you got an adult with you. Got an adult with you. <laughs> Where's the adult? I'm like, that's me. <laughs> and then I go in and I do the best alarm job ever. And they're like, pretty impressive. But that's what I'm saying, man. So I don't think I'm in like a 37 year old body. You know, I feel like e even my physique right now, I feel like is the best I've ever looked. It's it's crazy, man. And you know, we'll see. We'll Do you believe see. this it's is the best I've ever looked? Probably. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> so we'll see. But none of that matters, man, if I don't get a victory. So we'll see Saturday night. We'll see how it goes down. I'm confident in myself. I have the confidence. I have the ability. I have the skill. So we'll see what happens. I'm sorry you got a pinpoint on what time you're going to be fighting at. Cause so why don't you be like everybody that asks me, hey, Kurt, what time are you fighting? Because, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I know the exact time. No, I don't know. No, according to DraftKings, which they usually tell you pretty much like on yeah, bout okay. schedule, they had your fight at four thirty. And to be honest, you fun. normally know very little information about anything. It's not that I don't know the information. I'm just not keeping up with it. I'm focused on the task at hand. I'm focused on this guy that's going to try to kill me when the cage door shuts. I'm not worried about the time. So, do you but, know the time or not? Um, do I know the time? No, but if I had guess. <laughs> If did I he guess, say we should ask him? He did say that. 8.30-ish. Well, it's okay. So I would say 8.30-ish here. Okay. Because main card starts at 9. Uh, it looks like I might be the last prelim on the card. So, I would yeah. say 8.30-ish. So, that's, yeah. Because while you're doing that, I have my second attempt at commentating. commentating. So yeah, you'll be in uh, Mobile. Mobile, Alabama, calling the fights for Eminence Promotions. And we have one of our fighters actually fighting for a title on that card, too. Yeah, got Matthew Brown fighting, um, going for his first middleweight championship. Um, and let's see what happens, man. Like, where will you be Saturday night? I'm probably asleep. <laughs> At least not you going to wake up for first fight? Right. Uh, I mean, I was going to watch it with you, David, <laughs> but then you decided not to watch it, and you're going to go well, hang stopping. out and watch it. Apparently Roll stopping. time. Apparently they're stopping the imminent and gonna put it on. They got permission uh, to actually air the fight. Uh, okay. Yeah. But do I get to commentate for a minute during your fight? Why not? <laughs> hey, oh, he lands a big right. I mean, the, as long out. as they don't show, they could. As long as they don't show <laughs> the UFC, the UFC part, they could show y'all commentating. It could just be focused yeah. on y'all. Yeah. Cool. And they could, you know, clip that out and yeah. put it on something. So yeah. 
All right, let's get into the when you got tapped out this week. <laughs> Did not get. I mean, well, ten. I will say this. Listen, everybody's been trying to tap David out for yeah, a long time, and it finally out. happened. Oh yeah, yeah choked I, him I, out. I could have tapped him with an arm bar a couple of times. Okay, Debatable. okay, okay. Come choked on. him I'll out. I'll give you one. He, he one. finally got I choked out. I gave you out. one that I say if you would have went full and cranked it. It would have been a tap. The other ones I would, the other like, you had two in that role we did. One I'll give you, the other one I'm not. And it was in Gee, and Gee doesn't count. It does count. No. Always counts. Because it gives you fabric to where I can't lift up. <laughs> you really do hate Gee, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, respect, I respect the Gee. I will respect the Gee. You will we'll get your ass whooped. I will respect the Gee. I don't have to like the Gee. Word. No, so I got to get, I guess it is fitting that I got put in my own Montreal screw job situation in Kurt's gym that apparently had been talked about and planned for a couple of weeks. No, it's today. Dom said they actually had talked about it before. Dom to me that day. He said, look, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to roll with Big D. Because here's the story. He's only been choked. Twice. Twice in what? Ten years? Give or Probably. Take? Twice. No neck. You can't choke him. I even got bounties on this guy. I, I'm going to make some money because I got a bet with my other coach, Jimmy Mills, that he's got two guys that said they could tap him, but I said they can't. So we'll talk about that later. But one of our guys, one of our purple belts, Dom, come up and said, hey, when I roll with Big D, I'm going to jump. And I'm be like, I got him. I'll tap him. He's like, I'm going to put him like a triangle because you can't tap him in a triangle. But he's going to put him in a triangle and say, hey, I'll tap. He tapped. He tapped. And everybody's gonna start celebrating and go crazy. So it's pretty funny. I hear Dom, oh, he tapped, he tapped. And I look over, I'm like, yeah. Well, the biggest selling part, cause like he did it, and I'm like, I didn't tap. And he's selling it very well, I'll give him that. He's like celebrating that he just won a world championship. <laughs> and I'm getting a little pissed. I'm like, I don't mind if I necessarily get tapped. I mean, I do, it is cool to have that kind of thing. But if I actually tap, it is what it is. That's part of jujitsu. <laughs> Knowing that I didn't tap, and so you wanted to you wanted to Bret Hart punch Vince McMahon in the face. Well, I had to calm myself down. I will <laughs> say that because Don made one mistake. He didn't do it at the end of the round. We still had about a minute left. <laughs> <laughs> and I may have got a little too aggressive in that training with a partner role <laughs> that last minute <laughs> to the point where I had a guillotine and it wasn't a choke. It was literally a neck cracker. I was gonna think about ripping his head off at that point. And I even debated, I was like, I need to calm down and let this go. And I did. I was able to calm myself down. Bree, Kurt's wife, was the biggest one who was actually able to sell it the best because, of course, she's in on it, you know, at this point. Yeah. She was like, David, you I, you tapped. It seemed more like a panic tap, but you tapped. I'm like, I didn't fucking tap. Like, <laughs> so I was getting out of the triangle. She's like, I mean, we may need to go back on the camera, but I'm telling you, it looked like you tapped. Like, see, I'm like, didn't fucking tap. <laughs> it's really just me off now. And she's like, well, maybe you went to sleep and you didn't realize you tapped. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I like, and then after we, after that, cause he, they kept it up to the end of class. This is probably midway of class. You got another 30 minutes or whatever. And when I go roll with her, I was like, did you really get tapped by a triangle? I'm like, <laughs> sure. I thought I said my answer was sure. And then I got very aggressive with the majority of my other roles, which was not necessary. But uh, it is funny because, of course, being a wrestling fan and a Bret Hart fan and Dom being a wrestling fan as well, it was purely like, you know, the moment of put me in the sharpshooter, I'm going to reverse out of it, and they call the match. It was like, I let people put me in the triangle just to see if someone actually does finally catch it because it is, it's one of the first submissions you learn in jiu-jitsu, arm bar, probably triangle, your first two. Mm -hmm. So it is fun to kind of like, you know, it keeps my skill up, and it also, I still say, if anyone can get close to triangle in me or get it somewhat tight, you I don't can, think anybody's ever going to triangle you. You just don't have, your shoulders are too wide. You got to have thin shoulders. I just don't see nobody triangle you. The only way I see somebody choking is a collar choke or just somehow, I mean, maybe guillotine, maybe guillotine, but it's not going to be the arm all. It's going to be a hand on the side of the neck. So I don't know. But he did a good job. It was it was fun. Oh, he sold it. it he did. <laughs> and then we let him in at the end and let him know. Oh, there he is. When I, was getting ready to, when I was getting ready to leave, Don comes and tells me, hey, it was work. We had planned it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. It was a good joke. Yeah, it was good. It was actually on my birthday, too. That's the worst part of it. You're lucky <laughs> you didn't get the birthday roll. I told you I'd take the birthday roll. 
Because Dom um, gave me an option. Next, normal next week. <laughs> he gave me an option. He said, uh, would you rather admit that you tap or take the birthday roll? I said, I'll take the birthday rolls all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't really know what the birthday rolls are. I'm pretty sure it's a shark tank. Is but, shark yeah. Yeah, you just got to defend everybody. Yeah. But now it seems like uh, your wife has a little bit of a goal to get me in a choke now. With uh, She's talking about baseballs? What does that even mean? <laughs> it's a choke. It's not a choke. It's a, it's a gee choke. Which you can do an ogee choke. But it's a gee choke. It's an ogee choke. Too. It's a gee choke. You find me how many choke you. You it. find how many baseball chokes have been done in no game, and not what? A lot. I'm telling you, dude. There, there's guys that can do it. Uh, I've seen the. I know the choke is. I just can't see it being really executed that well. In, I've seen in it no game. executed. I've seen it put guys in struggle a couple times. Hmm. I'll show you some stuff. All right. Show me your baseball choke. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> And then Blake got to have his one-on-one interaction with his future opponent, Eddie. Tonight. I broke his fucking arm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's been... He, one thing I'll give Eddie is he loves... He truly does love this gym and love this sport. Because he's not done a train now. He's been in the... He just got his cast off this week. Uh-huh. He's been in a cast for what? Um, three weeks? Uh, a month? Probably almost a month. A month. Has not missed a class. Yeah. You know, he can't do shit. <laughs> he do that, well, he's one of my instructors. So he he's still, is. He's still here every day helping. But even when it's time to go home, man, he'll stay the whole time and just watch everybody train. So, yeah, I don't know. So Blake broke his arm. Yeah. He's retired now. The baseball choke. He's retired now. <laughs> I retired him. <laughs> so, Kurt, what else you got on the mind? Not much, man. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go back to a normal life. Like, I love fighting. It's, it's what I do. I love training. But like we, like we was talking at the beginning of the show, it just, it comes down to a time where you're like, okay, I've put in so much work, I'm ready to do it. So, and, and it's not a normal life. I'm ready to go back to a little bit of normalcy and spend some time at home. We have a guest. Yeah. <laughs> TikTok phenomenon. <laughs> I'm telling you. You know, um, I'm, ready, I'm ready to spend some time at home. I haven't had a weekend at home in probably three months. So what's your uh, so you got two days for you fly out Saturday yeah. Sunday you got the open house tomorrow for in house in house in house competition open house for school you're, you're, you're a real estate Sunday, person now uh, uh, it's probably going to be raining Sunday so I'm not going to get to do what I wanted to do I wanted to do a little bit of yard work you know maybe throw you're, a little oh you're coming to my kid's birthday party right Kurt I didn't know it was a little bit. I for, I forgot that was the thing too <laughs> both the art which kid did you, did you that would be me? funny <laughs> that would be the other guy Bree and you. I think he told me as while he was telling and me that. And you also were both invited on Facebook. Yeah, we, and that's not real. I should have knew though, because I remember the debate when she was being born, how close it was to your birthday. Yeah, I don't and, have a birthday. And, and you didn't want to share it with her. Yeah, I don't have a birthday anymore. She's born on the 11th. I'm the 13th. So literally, my birthday's gone. <laughs> <laughs> but now, so yeah. But no, so that's the thing. I guess it's almost like, so who's, or Rafael's flying out with you? Or yeah, Jimmy? me and Rafael fly out Monday. He's got to come out Tuesday. Jimmy comes out Monday too, but he's flying out of Mobile, of course. Yeah. Um, you got my um, tickets ready? No. Darn. I got to come record everything, man. Come on. Yeah, you got to get my tickets ready. Like that we got sponsors for now? Time yet, man. We, we, got, we got sponsors, you said. We do. Paycheck, you keep saying that. I haven't seen this paycheck. I've seen the paycheck. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it a giant cardboard? One? <laughs> that would be so great if we get a giant cardboard check. Where do you get those at? You know, I don't those? know. I'll mean, tell our sponsor to order. <laughs> order one of those giant checks for like ten dollars. Yeah, we just can't. Is that how much our first check is? Ten dollars? <laughs> no, 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 I'm just saying. No, I'm like, no, I'm saying we give one to someone like next fighter we sponsor. Yeah, we should do that. Give him a giant check. Giant check, <laughs> ten dollars. That's what we need to do. We need to figure out who is going to be our next fighter we sponsor. Man. David Falcone. Possibly. Gotta get this man to fight. He's supposed to fight. I will fight. Let's find the right opponent. We'll work on it. Let me get through this fight first. That's fine. I gotta get through this fight. And Kurt also told me I've got to go to 205. He don't want to fight in heavyweight. He's got to win this, uh, get us a $50,000 bonus. Would be nice. Then buy us a podcast studio. Shit, if if Dana White's in a giving mood like. uh, with the two ninety nine card. Give everybody a finish. Everyone who had a finish got a fifty thousand dollar bonus. Nice. I wish they could have done that on two ninety two. I would like right. just fix and choose which ones he wants to Hopefully do. Hopefully, knock this guy out in like two seconds, and then we can convince him to let you let you in on three hundred. You know. Yeah. 
How far away is 300 again? April. 300 yeah. set. Oh, you got to get a you got to get an injury because they finally yeah. finalized the car uh, this I'm week. I'm supposed to be going, but that, here's the thing too. Like even after this fight, I'm still not going to be home for the next two weeks. Yeah. I got the the weekend after. I got a guy fighting in Baton Rouge. The weekend after, I got to do a, a appearance for UFC 300 in Biloxi at the Beau Rivage. They're showing the fight at the Beau Rivage. Huh? They're going to show the fight at the Beau Rivage. I don't know. Is this like Bo or Va or UFC wants you to go there? No, uh, somebody else. I know. Yeah. So I want to bring in a few fighters, a few UFC guys, and stuff like that for a special appearance. I don't know if it's a big party or something they're trying to do for 300. Well, do me a favor. After you get through this fight, mm -hmm. find out the details on that one in advance. Not Friday before, like, you know, when you know the details of it. I think I should going to show right, the well, fight. UFC 300, I, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> oh, they call me and ask me if I want to come. Like, I got you. I got you. I'd just like to know because I do want to watch 300, but it'd be kind of cool to watch that uh, in the Boomer Raj. I'll watch it by myself. Fuck yeah. Uh, one other news. We finally got Sting's retirement done. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> you upset about it? Nah, it was, it's fine. <laughs> There's something you didn't like. <laughs> I didn't see the whole match. I seen some of it. I thought it was pretty cool out with those two sons. One came out of the old stage, the other Yeah, no, I mean, for what it was, I mean, it, it was cool. I don't know. I don't know who. To me, it's just weird tag match-wise to do your retirement tag match if you could still push and get a decent so, singles match. I didn't know. No, you didn't answer, I read AEW. He never wrestled a singles match in AEW. Uh, I think they said that he sing has about all tag matches. Right? No, I don't think that's okay. true. I think he's he wrestled a few, but he wrestled a <laughs> lot of sing, mostly singles matches, and he was undefeated. Um, but like I said, it was mostly tag matches. Uh, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I think he had a few. I just don't think it was a lot. It was okay. the, the tag matches and trios matches and things like that. But um, I don't. Like I said, considering it had it, it was they wanted it to be a tag match. I don't, I don't know that it could have went better or whatever. But like I think if Cody would have stayed there, I think the retirement match would have been Cody and Sting because they teased that when he first came and he was uh, went and introduced himself to Darby and stuff, and Cody was in the ring and he they had a kind of stare down and he was like. Uh, I'm not here for you right now, but and basically hinted that they'll get to that later or whatever. Yeah, well, Cody's got to finish his story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so how many people can we put on a podcast in this room for WrestleMania? Um, I think at this point, y'all don't turn off the air conditioner anymore. There's 17 people in the front room. I mean, we could just do this at somebody's house if we need to. I'm down for whatever. Saturday, the night one of WrestleMania is on a Saturday, so... We kind of cool to watch that. We got enough wrestling people in our. But room. my thing is, I mean, it's it's that's cool, but I feel like night two is going to be the better night. That's it what is, sucks. I just know it's Sunday. Yeah, but I guess it's a difficult time that ends Sunday. Yeah, you know that's the only tough part. Because I mean, when you're talking about Cody finishing a story, that's going to be. But know, I can say that. this: you will get the two. Rock tag match. Night but. one will dictate what's going to happen in that match. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. If Cody and Rollins win night one. He's losing the reign tonight, too. Yeah, but I don't think that's happening. I think that they're definitely winning, and then all the odds are going to be stacked against Cody, and then Cody's going to win. Well, I got a $20 bet with our good friend Jeremy the Repo Man. Jeremy the Repo Man? Yeah. I got Cody. He's got Reigns. He said Reigns is going to retain the title. Oh, <sighs> <I hope> not. <laughs> he said they're going to they're keep Reigns another year, barely wrestling, just to beat Hogan's record. Possibly. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that you can't say that's not going to happen. No, though. no, I know. I can't. The reason that I would think it's not is because. How do you have Cody lose two WrestleManias? Back two to WrestleManias in a row. The fans were already getting on your ass that y'all were about to not let him even have the match. But the fact that they weren't going to let him have the match. Kind of makes you think, well, they weren't ready for Cody to have the title. So, I mean, it's still a chance that they leave it on Roman <clears throat> and then set it. But then, when do you do Rock versus Roman? SummerSlam. That's what I think. The they Rock should. is there now, pretty much. I mean, I think, I think they should do it at SummerSlam either way. But I'm just saying, if that happens, do they 
push Rock versus Roman next WrestleMania. And then Cody still doesn't fucking finish his story. So would it be a cop out to have The Rock cost Roman the title? No, I think that's what's going to happen. happen. Yeah. That's what I think is going to happen. I think that they're acting like all the odds are going to be stacked against them and The Rock is going to cost them the title. That's going to set them up. But I will say the heel Rock is better than babyface Rock. Yeah, the but Rock's old Rock is not as good. Sure. Yeah. He, but he's actually he's closer to the <coughs> Nation Rock right now, which was mm-hmm. still, which was meant to be a heel. Yeah, he didn't come in that way, but the way the crowd per- 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 re- re- reacted to him kind of gave him that. Yeah, I mean, it's still, yeah, it's still a mix because he still has a lot of fans, but they didn't want that. It's just basically, I think that people did want Rock versus Roman. They just. They kind of gave up on that. Then they wanted Cody to finish the story. So then when they you let Cody win the Royal Rumble, you tell them that's what they're getting. Then all of a sudden you're like, no, now we're going to do The Rock versus Roman. And then it's like. Well, I, think the, I want The Rock versus Roman too, just not for a title. Yeah, it like, doesn't need to be for a title. When it's not for a title, I think Roman still will win. But it makes you think. It's that. more question to it. If it's for the title, The Rock's not yeah. to putting the it's championship yeah. on. Yeah. So that that's like where it just takes like you know that believable part out of it. I will make a say that Seth Rollins will not leave WrestleMania as a champion. In fact, we might get two title changes. Uh, title. That's that's my that, to me that's the perfect thing. I mean, we may have said that on the other podcast the last time we talked about it, but to me that makes the most sense because you've had Drew McIntyre constantly stop Damian Priest from cashing in that Money in the Bank briefcase, so. He should definitely ca- – <laughs> Drew McIntyre should win, and Damian Priest should cash it in on him. So, you know, because ironically, if you wouldn't have stopped him from cashing that shit in, it would have been y'all two. You could have beat him, and he wouldn't have that briefcase to cash yeah. it in on you. So. Well, we got what? That's early, that's early April, I think, WrestleMania. Yeah, it's, it's pretty soon. It's so probably, right, actually, then you get WrestleMania, probably then the week UFC after. 300, yeah. or what, be the way back yeah, to back. Yeah, vice versa. All right, let's touch, touch on. We're about a week late here, but Sugar Sean. Yeah. Is that somebody we're sponsoring? <laughs> he, he I know, I'm talking shit. An absolute clinic. On Cheeto. On Cheeto. Absolute clinic. Like, it was amazing. Like, he, he just couldn't really be touched. And when he was touched, it just made it look like it didn't even affect him. I do love the fact that after he wins that fight, we all know at 135, currently, who is the number one contender? Yep. Marab, which is a terrible matchup for sure. I think it is too, man, but. So he immediately calls out the 145 champ <laughs> to go up to become champ champ. I'd rather fight Tapura than I would Marab. Probably, yeah, because it's going to be on the feet. I mean, yeah. That's what. Marab's, a, about it once. Marab's one of the people that has the ability to. Somehow has a gas tank to keep doing this. Yep. He may not get the first three takedowns, but there's no, like, it's not he misses it, then he gets tired. He still has that gassing to go for takedown or takedown or takedown. And what I saw him <coughs> do to Henry Cejudo and what he did to Peter Yawn. No, he's a freak, man. One of the coolest guys in the world, but an absolute savage. Bad matchup for Sean O'Malley, but you know what? I will not underestimate Sean O'Malley in yeah. this one. Because mm-hmm. as we know, I, everybody thought... Uh, Aljo was a bad matchup, which he is. He was. Yeah. What that one of the best match. wrestlers in the division takes the back better than anybody in the division, but he couldn't push on down in the first round, and the second round got crap. Yeah. And then we have Dustin Poirier defeating Father Time. Yeah, man, for sure. True veteran, man. That was true veteran. Poirier won. Who? Poirier beat Benoit, the up and coming guy. You said Benoit. Benoit saying to me. Oh. Yeah. I was about to say, he really did beat Father Time. Or you call him BSD. Raising like. people from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> so we've lived long enough where Poye is the old man. He is. That's crazy. Is. Y'all the same age, huh, Kurt? No, I'm older than him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm older than him. <laughs> Father Time. <laughs> he's younger than me, man, but he, he's been fighting for a while. He's well, fighting before me. Well, if I remember correctly, he came into the UFC on a short notice fight to fight yeah. Josh Rusby. Pretty sure Grizzly was supposed to fight for the title. Um, and then they pulled it. I'm, I, I thought, I think, 
I think yeah, was, I do remember that. It could have been. I think it was Grisco with his first fight, short notice. It was either and Grisco he won. Or um, no, he, so what happened? Poirier went to WEC, and he yeah. fought Danny Castillos mm-hmm. in the WEC back in the day. Um, lost a decision, and then he fought another guy in WEC. WEC won. Well, it kind of like the same thing with Strike Force. UFC bought WEC, so he brought the contracts over. So he didn't really take a short notice fight in the UFC. And then I do want to say. What are they grossly with a short notice yeah, fight? Yeah, I mean, he could, he could have just said, hey, I'll, I'll fight anyone on short notice. But pretty sure Poirier was already contracted. So, yeah, he know. beats Grisby. And he goes on, like, a good little run. I remember his first loss. And I actually went. That's the first time I ever was training a sparring with Dustin, which when he was still training in Louisiana, training for a Korean zombie. Me and Brandon went down yeah. to spar with him. So, but, yeah, man, he's been fighting for a long time. He's fought the who's who. Definitely a legend of the sport. Gotta give him his freaking props. I'll man. be honest, I did doubt him in this fight. I, I thought I, I really thought doubted you him. didn't. We uh, if you go back to the pot, which I actually did on one of our previous ones, you were saying anytime Dustin, you can get an underdog odds. How yeah. do you go against them? Like you still, I just thought Benoit was truly the <coughs> truth. And I mean, and he may, he still may be at some point, but right now, be, but it, but that's the thing, man. Like you can't make mistakes. You, you 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 press too hard in a fight and you empty your gas tank too quick, that could be a mistake. You can also say that Dustin <laughs> he jump, say that, jumping man. for the guillotine 14 Dude. times after your coach tells you, do not jump for the guillotine again. And then you do it immediately. And then you say on the mic, I will always jump for the guillotine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, hey, man, great performance. He was able to get it done. He did. Spectacular fashion, br- brutal knockout. It was nice. Was. Glad it's a good team win. Mm-hmm. So, Kurt, you got any last thoughts, words for your people before you fight to Vegas? Got any last words? Let's uh, let's have some fun, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going there to put on the show. It's always killer be killed. Um, so, like I was, I was talking to somebody, and now uh, they were asking questions about it, and I'm like, dude, if something doesn't go my way, it's just a loss. Who gives a shit? I've been there many times. You know, I don't even know if I'm supposed to be here. You know, I got a family back home that's still going to be supporting me. I got all you guys. I got my gym. I got all my students. But make no mistake about it. The motherfucker's going to have to kill me. Yeah. It's kill or be killed. And if he wants to win the fight, I will not go away. He's literally going to have to kill me or put me out. And another it's thing. the only way he gets it done. I don't know if it's even played on your mind or not, but I was thinking about this on the way up here. You actually, you did win the Ultimate Fighter, which is telling UFC, but it's in, you know, the TV show. But you actually got the monkey off of your back and actually did get a win, finally, under the UFC banner at 292, at a huge card. Not saying that may not matter to you. I would imagine that'd be a relief just to finally get that validation. So it's not like you have, it's not like you're coming off the Ultimate Fighter. And this is your first fight in the UFC again. It's like, it's like, now I know what it's like. Yeah. To win in the UFC. I was there. I did on one of the biggest cards of the year. Yeah. You know, I know what it's like now. You know, I've done it on the Ultimate Fighter, done it in the UFC now. I've done it on the Contender Series. You know, yeah. I've, I've had good fights. I know, yeah. I, I know it's possible now. Yeah. Back before, it's like, man, when, when you lose it and you're like, damn, is it possible for me to win here? Yeah. You know, can, I, can I defeat all these odds? Can I get the pressure off my shoulders? Can I battle the pressure in the lights from the camera? And the, UFC. Yeah, it can be discouraging coming off of that, but right. now it's just like another thing, man. I show up, I ain't start struggling with nobody. I don't give a shit who these fighters are. Most of the fighters there, I was in the UFC long before them. So it's like I, I'm I'm there for business. Fully confident. Know I can get it done. I know what it's like to win in the UFC. Ready to get it done. It's gonna be fun. Blake, any last words for eulogy for staying or anything you want to say? No, I just want to know how much that check was. Uh, well, also, can we get some food from Creole tonight? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. remember? Uh, I know, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, we need, need something to eat. Yeah, I don't remember what I ate, but we should get some for the um, podcast. You know, well, you know what? I'll get the book up. Yeah, because you can eat. I mean, once you can eat. Well, yeah, yeah. Maybe get him. Uh, come by. What you want? I don't know. I will get. I got. I got to go. Burger. That smash burger. Yeah, was legit. Well, say. I didn't know. Was that what he made that day? Was that just a special menu, or was that mostly well, what no, he? They catered. Oh no, you wasn't there. That wasn't your. Were you, you, well, we use your venue. 
Oh, okay. I was like, yeah, venue. you rented the venue. Yeah, we rented. Yeah. But did, did, we, did, we, did we leave any leftovers or anything? No. You sure? I didn't get them. Yeah, did, you, did you have to clean it up the next day? No, we cleaned it up. Well, we did a pretty good job. They did fun. No, they did. Yeah. They didn't leave a trash. Yeah. I mean, but like I tell everyone on that though, it's kind of hard. Like, I mean, take your trash out, pick up to an extent. But if I can get paid on Monday to go pick up some chairs and tables, I have no problem with that either. Yeah. <laughs> so. But so, yeah. So. Hey right, guys, good to have the original, you know, the usual original three. Yeah, I appreciate y'all letting me come on y'all's podcast. You're welcome, man. You're welcome. <laughs> you know, we actually. I, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this on camera now. We are recording the Sunday you get back after your fight. Yeah. Got to. We'll see. You can't not record okay, on Sunday. I'm, I'm gonna try. You can make a 15. First, I'll bring them flowers. It's okay. If you win, all right? I know what's happening right now. No, You're getting a little doubt okay. in your soul. Yeah, I, 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 you I, I, y'all I said you. it yesterday, but you can't right, tell me you. that shit. I got you. I'll be here. Bring them fly out late. You fly in the morning. Bring right. a beer? He'll bring, bring you Waffle House. Right. Beer and Waffle House. We're, we're all <laughs> Beer and Waffle House. So, yeah. So, we got that. Well, I mean, yeah. I'll be driving in from Alabama. That's right. I'll be commentating. I'll be, He'll be in I'll be, I'll be sleeping. I'll be sleeping still. We'll, we'll make it happen, guys. We'll make it happen. And then the following week, we are going to be joined by a guest, the owner of the wrestling school in Denham. I don't know. You should probably find out the name of that. <laughs> I actually looked the name up before I got and here. Smooth for God. <laughs> huh? But yeah, he wants to come. Uh, we talk, talk with him and get that set up. Who's the guy, the Chad, that wants to do a podcast? The Chad that was here? Chad. Uh, one of my blue belts. Yeah, so whenever he's But he, what did he want to do a podcast about? Um, He does a lot of mission trips and stuff. Oh, okay. And I think he just wants to like, kind of just better talk and do one. And I said, once you get ready when you're going to launch, we can bring you on the week or two before that's going to come out and kind of talk about it. Once, well, he, y'all check out the Chad's mythological podcast that doesn't exist yet. Doesn't exist yet. It's coming. I don't know. I'm calling it's it like, the Chad. It's like... Winter is coming. Winter is coming. The I'm re- Chad. I'm rewatching Game of Thrones. The Chad now. is coming. Oh, okay. No, I'm not rewatching that. It's such a good show. I'm going to rewatch Spartacus. I never, I never watched Spartacus. We could, never mind. Do I want to go into the story about the Romans real quick and the Spartans? Really, not really. Uh, Kurt, Kurt's ready to leave. Yeah, I got to get on the road, guys. Once again, I'm always on the road, bro. Are you really on you're the, on the road, road, or are you going, going to your house? Going to Baton Rouge. Oh, that's we right. Got it. We got it. He's not. He's going tonight night. Get a hotel. Saying I get up at four in the morning to be yes. at the open house in house. Uh, yeah. yeah. Open house in house. Raiden's the very first match. Man. Yeah. Tornado is kicking us off. He's going to be match. tired. He's running around here like yeah, know, like an actual tornado. Going, so. <laughs> All right. Good to get back in the studio. Thank you to our sponsors, Creole Tomato, Hatchet Industries. Appreciate you guys. As always, like, share, subscribe, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Let's build this following up because I'm telling you, we'll get this fight done. Move on to the next one, man. We're going to keep growing. We'll keep building. Bring everybody with us. So. Yeah, he's going to start recording things when he's training. <laughs> well, I got a few things recorded. We're just not ready to release it yet. Oh, you can't okay. release it before the fight. Then people see what I'm working on. So after the fight, we'll, I got some video. We'll, we'll, we'll throw some video into the mix after the fight. All right. Sounds good. Not a deal. All right, guys. Take it easy. Peace.